As you can tell by the video box for 1990's The Sleeping Car, everyone wanted a piece of Freddy and Jason's shit. Another 80's holdover, The Sleeping Car, is a mediocre killer ghost movie with a decent cast, solid special effects, and co-stars Friday the 13th, the final chapter hottie, Judy Aronson. Wisecrack college student Jason, played by American Werewolf in London's David Naughton, moves into a train car haunted by its old conductor, known as The Mister, a rapist serial killer. Jason teams up with his college girlfriend and a local exorcist played by Kevin McCarthy to stop the mister's haunting killing spree. The Sleeping Car is an entertaining and weird ghost slasher that features enough eccentricities and bizarre kills to make for an amusing horror outing. The Sleeping Car is maybe worth watching for the cast alone. Grease is Jeff Conway is great as the sleazy and cool professor, Naughton is likable and comedic, and Aronson is smoking hot. She's still my favorite Friday girl. The gore is minimal and the death scenes are a mixed bag. The highlights are when a meathead has springs burst through him after raiding Jason's car, and then later Conway gets eaten by a hide bed while Dirty talking to a chick on the phone. The body count is low, but the special effects are impressive for the budget. The ghost slasher looks cool too, the mister has a gooey and creepy look about him, but the horror and terror aspects of the film are underwhelming and come off like afterthoughts of the film's comedy. The movie mainly consists of characters drinking in the college bar or exchanging witty banter. There is an overload of juvenile jokes in the flick. Almost every exchange of dialogue works to set up a punchline, and it gets kind of annoying. The film's tone is all over the place, but manages to be unique at least. There is some TNA for the skin fans, as there is some gratuitous nudity early on and a cheesy sex scene featuring Aronson later in the film. The film's supernatural plot never seemed fully developed. They never made an effort to explain what was happening until the last 20 minutes, and by then it just felt forced and like an afterthought. Kevin McCarthy spouts a lot of dialogue about white magic, and his character is a warlock of sorts. Turns out the minister was a train conductor and serial rapist and killer who now haunts the sleeping car due to being really pissed off about a train crash that was caused by people fornicating instead of doing their train jobs. In the end, the ghost is released after Jason forgives him and embraces him, almost Ernest Scared Stupid-esque. <laughs> the Sleeping Car isn't a terrible flick. It can be an unfocused and quirky one at times, but it's a competently made ghost slasher that features enough effective scares and creative effects to make for an interesting viewing this October. I did enjoy the setting of the actual Sleeping Car and found the film's electronic music to be well done. You okay? Christ, what a dream.